uh, can you uh, introduce yourself uh, for folks? Okay, I'm, uh, I'm Matthew Salzer, I'm, and I'm the uh, co-founder of uh, Sequoia Sumo Club. Amazing, amazing. Matt, can you tell folks, how did you get involved in Sumo? Uh, well, um, my, uh, my brother John, um, uh, he, we actually first uh, went to Japan um, when I was about seven. And uh, we lived there for close to a decade, so for all intents and purposes, uh, we grew up there. And um, that was during the golden age of sumo, like the, uh, the mid to late 90s, uh, uh, what I call the last golden age, where you know you had, you had you know, Americans like Konishiki, Akebono, the late Akebono, may rest in peace. Um, you know, Taka no Hana, they had that rivalry going on there, Musashi Maru. And then I got to see the rise of Asa Shoryu as well. So I, it, it, was, it was a big time for sumo and um, I was, got, uh, you know, uh, so I never really like completely got out of it. Like I, I didn't follow it as strongly with the rise of and reign of Hakuho. Mm -hmm. um, I, it was one of those things where I kind of just followed it a lot less, but um, so, uh, I actually, John and I actually did like uh, what's called Wampaku Zumo, it's the equivalent of Little League Zumo over there. Nice. Uh, we did one or two tournaments over there, but then we ended up, we moved to another part of Japan and we shifted to wrestling. Mm -hmm. And um, athletically, I did that through, uh, through college. Um, then uh, just life got ahead, but then uh, uh, Shortly, uh, t towards the end of the pandemic, I started getting a competitive itch. Yeah. And, were, and John and I were talking about like possibly getting into masters wrestling, so you know, like the age group wrestling. Yeah. But um, especially for me, because right before the pandemic, I moved from you know, Southern California to the Central Valley. Yeah. And there wasn't a whole lot of, there's not a whole lot of wrestling there, despite it being you know, a, a hub for, for high school wrestling. That's mm -hmm. where most of the state champions are. But um, I started exploring things, and then I realized that it was a lot easier to start a sumo club than it was a wrestling club. Mm -hmm. And not to mention, it's a lot, you, you know, it's, there's not as much cardio involved. So that's how I kind of got involved in it. And I uh, got a friend to uh, come along, and uh, John helped me uh, help create it. And uh, that's, that's, uh, that's how I got back into it as an adult. Amazing. I heard you talk a little bit about uh, the, the golden age of, uh, of, of pro, zoom, pro sumo. Can you talk a little bit about who's your favorite pros? Uh, uh, it can be my past my overall favorite right now is Konishiki. Nice. Because, uh, um, you know, he had, he had these humble beginnings in Hawaii. He, you know, didn't, didn't have very, he came from, a, you know, humble origins. And he went and became the first, um, he came, became the first foreign uh, Ozeki, but nice. you know, ultimately he pla he you know trailblazed the way for Akebono, yes. who trailblazed the way for us. I showed you who trailblazed the way for Hakuho, who was the yeah. best. You know, is is the best. I have no idea. Um, I'm really liking uh, the young upstart Takeru Fuji, who you know came set multiple records and his first you show his his first. Um, Basho as uh, Makuchi Rikichi, Rikishi wins it. <laughs> mm -hmm. And so I'm just like, man, this kid's got a future. He accomplished something that no one had accomplished in 110 years. Ooh. So talk about making history. Yeah, it, literally making history. <laughs> yeah. So I'm. It's, he's 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 a, a favorite of mine right now because I'm just like this this kid. If he if bar any kind of injuries or you know something mental going on, this kid's mm -hmm. gonna go places. Nice. Um, for you, what? Why is it so important to? Why was it so important to to start a sumo club? And also, like, how do you feel about um, the way that the sport is growing? Well, you know, the fact of the matter is, sumo's not that well known in the U.S. It, it's kind of, it. Uh, I'd say probably the most exposure that anyone sees of it is probably what they see in pro wrestling. Mm -hmm. So they think of these these guys like Yokozuna and Rikishi, who were not real life. You know, were not real life. You know, sumo Rikishi. They were part of you know the Anoahi wrestling family, which The Rock, uh, Dwayne The Rock Johnson, came out of. Yeah. So ultimately, they view it as this kind of like curiosity. That's like something that's just out there, and it, that's that's about it. They don't really think of it as something to be 
taken seriously. And when I started the club, I, I've kind of, even though I've found people uh, like the host dojos yeah. who are willing to do it, a lot of other people just kind of like treat it as this, this like curiosity that it's like, uh, it's like, maybe I'll see it, maybe, but, but I, I really do think it's something, it, it, I view it as basically a type of grappling, which yeah. it, it is, and yeah. I think that more people should do it. And it doesn't really take a whole lot of investment either because, you know, we have clubs, like at times, we have clubs who have practiced outside. Um, yeah. uh, at um, Sequoia Sumo's practiced outside mul during multiple stints. So yeah. it's, 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 so yeah, I, I've, it's, I saw, one of the reasons, it wasn't just because I wanted to get competitive. I saw a whole, like, we've got several sumo hubs in the United States. We've got Texas, we've got Florida, we've got sen, sen, uh, Southern California, but there, there's areas where people just don't do sumo. So I saw a hole in the Central Valley and especially my area because yeah. you know you have the the uh, del Torre brothers who yeah. live in bakersfield but that's that's several miles that's like 40 miles south of mm -hmm. uh where we are uh at sequoia in yeah. the the uh hanford the lamore hanford visalia area kind of just south of fresno yeah. so i saw a hole and i was just like you know i'm gonna i'm gonna fill it and um it's been slow um but a lot of uh, sumo clubs have slow growth and yeah. it's, it's one of those things where we just have to keep pushing. Yeah, and like uh, the fact that you all are in Central Valley, like such a, a an amazing and rich part of the state of California, like I love that there uh, is sumo accessible for the Central Valley that gets fit, forgetting, forgotten about uh, so much. Yeah, because, well, like, for example, the last few years have been really wet, and, you know, we recently had Lake Tulare reappear, and I think it's still there. Like, the last few rounds of, uh, of rain have, have, uh, mm -hmm. are keeping it there, and that's a forgotten part because yeah. it was drained, and it was, it's, it's mainly farmland, yeah. and a few of the farmers aren't happy with the lake being there. Uh, but, <laughs> but, but it's a part of the heritage, and, like, yeah. the, the local, like, an example, the local Tachi Yaku tribe, um, started doing like uh, tribal ceremonies at the lake Amazing. again because wow. it's it's back there and they're just like this is part of our heritage so they started doing stuff over there and um, yeah there's just there's there's a lot of culture in the Central Valley yes and mm -hmm. and so it's it's and even like the even like the settler uh, like the 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 communities of the settlers like we had a bunch not a lot of people realize this they're the like a lot of California, there's a lot of Hispanics there, but they're because of the, the you know the Spanish and then Mexican heritage. Mm -hmm. But there's also a lot of Portuguese that came, mm -hmm. uh, came there from like the Azores and stuff like that. Yeah. So that there's and it's like a, yeah. a rich community. Well, and then well, Valley. and then on top of that, we have a we have a um, we have the the naval base, the the, mm -hmm. the master jet base there yeah. um, in Lamore. Uh, where we've had one or two military guys uh, come and hit the mats with us. Nice. So, so there, yeah. so yeah, there's there's like a multifaceted culture, and to kind of introduce people to another part of that, yeah, is is it's it's almost a privilege, uh, yeah. honestly, because it's it's, and like I said, it's been slow progress. Um, some people just are don't necessarily, um, a lot of people are, are treating it like a, a curiosity and. Some people, even as a pariah, like there's been times when I, there was times when I was trying to look for a gym and I was like, would you be interested? And people just said flat out, no. Mm. Not necessarily giving an explanation, but I think it's just, it's one of those things where again, because of just all the misconceptions, like yeah. I'm sure Austin Powers didn't help that either. Yeah, yeah, of course, um, the blow-up um, uh, you know, Yeah, the blow-up as well. It's, uh, it's some, some people think of it us think of our you know our sport as a joke and it's just like no we are a serious sport i yeah. mean like a bunch of us like definitely me i'm in my 30s i mean we're probably not gonna make it to the uh, to the pro level i mean mm -hmm. we might do the the world champion sumo league may maybe mm -hmm. but but it's it's ultimately we just want to grow the sport and Heck we yeah. and I just, you know, I got in there because I wanted to spread it and I wanted to have fun while I'm doing it. And yep. for example, you know, at the U.S. Open last year, I was, it's like when they were introducing me, I was just smiling because I was just like, I am happy. I've never gotten this much. It's like during my entire wrestling career, I was never on a big screen, mm -hmm. never. And I wrestled, like I said, I wrestled through 
uh, I wrestled through little. It's like I've competed in national tournaments. Yeah. So I was the fact that I went through all that time and was never on a big screen, and here I was entering the U.S. Open. I'm just like, Heck look at yeah. me, there I am right there. Yep. And then even on the. <laughs> And then even if you look at the quick highlight video, that's like two minutes. Mm -hmm. I'm in that that dramatic. Oh, that's thing. amazing. I, I that's was just amazing. like, I was just like, you know what? <laughs> that's goofy. I'm happy I was on there. Nice. Hell yeah. Okay, so the reason why I think people should join sumo is it's really a sport for everyone because you know we have we have little kids to guys in their 40s and 50s and we have men and women and um, I've met someone so everything in between apparently but it's it's one it's it's a pretty all inclusive community it's of all ages of all genders and of all shapes and sizes. You don't have to be in the best of shape. We got some people who are world-class athletes and we have people who look like kind of that more typical sumo body. But you know what? It is it's it is truly for everyone. And you can go out there and if nothing else, you can have a good time. So I, I really do think sumo's for everyone. Amazing. And Matt, can you do me a favor and let folks know if they're in the Central Valley, how they can get connected and when they can come to class and where? Okay, so uh, we primarily, um, we primarily, as of right now, are having our classes at Ochoa Combat Academy in Lemoore. If uh, you're in, ever in there and you want to uh, check us, if um, we try to do stuff at least monthly, we do pick up a little bit more dur uh, during tournaments, but we mm -hmm. do things at least monthly. Um, or our, uh, we have a Facebook and an Instagram, uh, Sequoia Sumo Club. Uh, so yeah, just come check us out. Uh, and like I said, it's for everybody. You don't even, you don't have to have a mawashi, and uh, you know it's it's right now it's for free. So come out and have a great time. Right now, yeah. Thank you so much, man. Appreciate yep. you.